Praise the Lord. Nearer my God to thee. Nearer to thee. It it be across the rest. He set me yet. My God, to thee, nearer my God, nearer my God, nearer my God to you, nearer, nearer. Our Father, that's our cry this night. Thank you, Lord, for the ministration by your servants, the choir. Thank you for the cry of our hearts. That out of the belly, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Everything that is dead, they will receive life in the name of Jesus. Things that are about dying, they will receive revival in the name of Jesus Christ. Things that are out of joints, you bring them back to shape in the name of Jesus Christ. That which the devil thought he has scattered and taken away, we shall recover them in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we ask tonight, arise on our behalf. Do something deliberate with our lives. Send us forth out of this conference, O oh God, with fresh fire, fresh consecration, fresh authority for ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you very much, sir, for another time. And thank you for the opportunity to bring the word of God to this uh, conference this year again. We appreciate all that you've done and all that our leaders and the chairman of the central planning. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you. As our Father and the Lord has spoken, this is going to be the third exposition on our team. And I'm trusting that God will help us to tie things together as we conclude uh, this particular series. Don't forget that we have been speaking on this theme in various ways. Several servants of God have taken different parts of it. And our mommy in the Lord, Mommy Gio, had just led us in a very incisive instruction about morality and integrity in the home. We can make our children higher than who we are. Our life is the seed, is the bedrock upon which they can build their own lives. May God help us to sow worthy seeds into their lives such that when we sit back, we see them growing forth, even as we have prayed tonight, in the name of Jesus. You will note that as we continue to look at the exposition of this theme, I have been revolving around the issues and by this morning we came to note that the very critical responsibility that God has given to us as leaders, as ministers, as teachers and preachers of the word of God is not just about proclamation. It's about the manifestation of the truth in our lives. And if God's greatest desire is to raise ministers that have servo to stop sin, servo to stop decay and corruption, if God's desire to raise men and women who are the light in whom there's no darkness at all, 
whose life rebuke every activity of darkness wherever they find it, who becomes the light. The Bible says, those that sat in darkness and in the region of death, light has sprung up. And we saw that that light is not moonlight, it's not electric light, it is the light of life. If that is our task, and that God is expecting that the aroma of Christ is what will be oozing everywhere we stand, then we said the matter of integrity, the matter of purity of life, the matter of living a life that is impeccable and beyond reproach is critical if we are going to fulfill the call of God on our lives. But we came to now look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 is a passage you have read many times. But this passage does not stop speaking every time. And so tonight, as we draw conclusions, there are a few issues that that scripture has brought out again that I would like you to please look at. Let's turn our Bibles onto 2 Timothy. And 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 and verse 20 is the text that we're supposed to spend time to expose tonight. But because our text, verse 19, started with a very curious word, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Because that passage started with nevertheless, it is not correct for us to start a sentence with nevertheless. You know the word nevertheless means that notwithstanding which means there are things that are going ahead that this passage is coming to say regardless of what has been going on regardless of what everyone, everyone else is doing nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure so it will not be complete or it will be vague if we begin by saying nevertheless nevertheless Nevertheless, you'll be asking, what is it? What is notwithstanding? What are you talking about? So that's why this passage is compelling me to go back. And I would like to quickly go back a bit so that I can go forward. Do you permit me to do that quickly? Aha. So let's take 2 Timothy. We'll read from verse 14. And then we'll get as far as that verse 21. And then we can stop our reading. Of this, of these things, put them in remembrance. Charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit but to the subverting of the hearers. Study. Show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Emenius and Philetus, who concerning the truth 
have heard, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. I'd like to stop there. May God, uh, who is in our midst, speak personally and deliberately to our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. The passage is long enough to engage all that we have to do tonight. So you will permit me to just focus on it as we build this final exposition tonight. Integrity and morality in life and in ministry. The first issue that we saw before we come to the nevertheless is the fact that even when we're talking about morality and we're talking of integrity, I want you to know that there are many, many who have come into the ministry to make a good living out of it. And you might say, Ragbile, why are you insisting that we must live right? There are many other preachers, there are many other pastors, there are many other men of God who are living their life anyhow. They can even divorce their wives and come and celebrate it on the pulpit and pick another one. And you saw them. After they are married for some few years, they come and said, I have just concluded that, that me and my wife, we are not compatible, so we have decided to go our different ways. Praise the Lord. And people will shout hallelujah, just like you have said. Because you shout hallelujah without thinking. You endorse every statement without hearing what they have said. You clap for people who should be stoned. That's the generation we have come. We have come to a generation of captive audience. Because they have done this kind of motivational speaking for too long. They have robbed us of the Berean Christian spirit. That says, wait, let us check whether what you have said is in the Bible or not. So it is easy for us to have people to sway the congregation, to move people anyhow they want to move them. They can make us to gyrate, gyrate for one hour. He has said nothing, but everybody is sweating. Because we have come to that generation where men are very brilliant to do evil. They are very calculative in order to bring inventions. They did not only come, they didn't go through Bible school. They didn't sit anywhere. And some of you have gone to life college and you know for four years you have been you know, confronted with the word of God you are studying and all of They went nowhere. They only went to business school and they learned psychology and they know how to motivate people how to create emotional sentiments. That is their qualification on the pulpit. 
and they seem to make it because they are telling people what the ears want to hear. People with itching ears and want to eat Then you just bring something just to scratch their ears and they say, yes, yes, pastor, preach it, preach it. Mm, hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Such is the kind of congregation. Nevertheless, God has not changed. The foundation of God standeth sure. It doesn't matter how many thousands have been swayed. It doesn't matter how many are no more preaching the truth. It doesn't matter how the message of holiness, the message of the cross had been made to look old-fashioned. Nevertheless, foundation of God standard how? Sure. We are speaking about morality. We are speaking about integrity. Because, nevertheless, God's foundation standard sure. If it is possible to adjust or to change or to make God's standard to become something less, I will have just said, since the brothers have invented something new and since they seem to be holding the crowd and since they have a way of speaking, that suits many young people and they are all dancing and gyrating around them. And people like us should have just retired and go and just sit down. And they'll be happy to say, yes, these old-fashioned preachers, uh, they have been silenced. Brother, nevertheless, the foundation of God does what? Stand sure. And it has a seal. So why Brother Paul was instructing Timothy and instructing him on what is priority to be laid as a man who wants to succeed. Speaking to a minister, a man or a woman who wants to succeed and do well. Look at the word of God. He said, charge them before the Lord. Not to strive about words to no profit. One of the things that our generation has come with, empty words, high-sounding nonsense. But high-sounding, high intellectualism. Somebody will just come and be saying things that just make everybody to jump. You know, sometimes when they are talking, you are on your toes. You are on your toes. You are jumping. You are jumping. He himself is jumping. He's also doing like this. And he say, yes, that's a powerful message. I wonder where is the power of it. This is a message you will hear once and you can't remember again. It makes you temporarily to forget where you are coming from. But when they have collected everything that is in your pocket, your eyes will open when you get home. And the Bible spoke about it. Peter did not keep quiet about them. Jude spoke about it. John the Beloved spoke so much about them. Paul spoke about them. Jesus Christ told us that they will come. So what is the first charge in order to maintain integrity? Number one, charge them not, not to strive, not to preoccupy themselves about words that has no profit. Stop wasting time about high sounding intellectualism. What you need to make heaven you don't need big English to understand it. Amen. Instructions for glory. 
is not sophisticated. You don't even need to go to university to understand them. You don't need to understand Greek or Aramaic for you to know what God is saying to do. Do not engage and preoccupy yourself with empty words that does not bear and carry profit to those that are hearing except that it ruins their lives. It ruins their faith. It makes them less sensitive to what is important. It makes them to become complacent about the condition of their souls. It makes them to forget what is crucial as far as God is concerned. It makes them to major on the minors. And it makes them to treat lightly things of gravity. It makes them to forget that where we are going is eternity. And that eternity is not measured in the number of years. It's a forever and ever and ever. And that when you step into eternity unprepared, you are forever unprepared. When you step into eternity on level one, forever and ever and ever and ever, you are going to be on that level one. No promotion in eternity. No change. And we are called as servants of God to prepare men for heaven. To fit them for the sky. To prepare them for rapture that could happen any time. How do you engage people with empty words? How do you occupy them day and night, every week, week after week, on empty positive talking that has no bearing with their lives? Brothers and sisters, the first thing that I must say in pursuing integrity and morality in life and ministry is never to preoccupy yourself with words that deceives, with empty messages. I would like you to sit down and check who are you listening to? Who are your people that you, 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 you listen to? Who is your preacher? Who is your teacher? Whom are you excitedly following? What is the manner of their lives? Where have they ended? Do they have an enduring testimony for many years that we can say, ah, I knew him, I knew him in this year, I knew him that year, I knew him that year. He has remained consistent. He has not changed. Who is this? That is influencing your life. Where do you spend your heart? Charge them. Not to waste their life. Not to keep arguing about empty vocabularies. That does not bear any profit. Except to the ruin of the hear us. Number two, you be diligent. Uh, verse 15 says, study. Study. And when I look at the meaning of the word study, it's more than read. The word study in that passage is much more than reading. If I were going to put it in my own way of understanding, the word means be studious. What does it mean to be studious? To be deliberately careful as to mark every instruction. As to make sure that every little, little detail of instruction, you did not model them up. You are studious. Be diligent. Be hard working. Be deliberate to present yourself approved unto God. Do you know that 
the issue of morality and integrity will not be a matter for you. I, don't, I will not need to preach it. If every day of your life you stand before the mirror of the Almighty and say, Father, how did I rate in your presence today? Father, check me out. Do I win your approval? Are you all right with me? Is my life the one you have delighted in? If you will study, if you will be studious, if you will be deliberate, if you will be diligent, if you will focus and concentrate on winning God's approval for your life, I'm telling you, Morality, integrity will never be a problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know one thing that many have missed and many are still missing is that they do not look for approval from heaven. They are concerned about approval from men. They are looking at some persons who will say, yes, yes, you are all right. You are all right. You are all right. And if they win approval of men, they thought that that was enough. I'd like to say to you, when you begin to seek the approval of men, can I call you the name that God calls it? Should I tell you? You are a man pleaser. You are an eye server. Any man who is waiting for men to endorse his life, even when God has said no to his life, he is a man pleaser. He is an eye server. He is not a servant of God. He's a servant of his belly. Is a servant of men and they dictate to him what he does, what he says. So if a big man is in the church who every time you are preaching he looks at you with his two eyes and immediately you become a stammerer. If any time you preach a message and it's very hot and the man did not come to shake hand with you before he went home. You are restless. You telling your wife, hey, the man didn't greet me before he left home. Hey! Hey. What did I say that could have offended him? Then you take your phone. Chief! Chief, show me me. And that is his name. Yog by me, re. Yog by Rol or Rolon Lenore. Go go if Rolon or Lua Lodia Yere. Walk Bemu. When you become a man pleaser, you will lose step with God. Oh, chief. I was surprised. It, it looks as if you are not very happy in the service this morning. Can I quickly come and see you, sir? He said, well, uh, I thought that you are learning. But the way you are beginning to speak, I wonder if you want to last in this church, uh, you need to be deliberate and careful. Anyway, you can come and see me. Then you are running. You are not a servant of God. You are a servant of men. You are serving your belly. There can be no integrity with your life. Integrity is only possible when you only fear God. Hallelujah. And then you went to say, sorry, sir. Concerning that thing that I was saying, it's not about you, sir. You know, I understand. I understand. 
We have been together for many years. So when you saw me talking like that, it's not about you. You know, there are some other young people that are not responsive that we need to talk to. So it's not about you, sir. He said, well, well, thing about Tyre. Oman Tassian. When you know I'm on the ground, you don't say such things. When you are talking, people are looking up and down at me as if I see something is wrong with my marriage. Eh? Even though I am having the number three wife. Yes. But you knew that I was like that before you made me chairman of building committee. And all the money that we have invested in this thing. I just want you to be careful. God bless you. I also bless you. I also bless you. When your blessing is in the hand of a man, you have no integrity to defend. No man can serve two masters. You either choose one and let the other one go. You cannot serve God and money. It's not possible. Do your best to win. Who's approver? God's approval on your life. Now let me now tell you. When God has approved a man, nobody on earth can disapprove him. If God decides to stand by you, let the whole world gather against you, they will fall. And when you stand for the truth of the word of God, the truth will defend you. So we read in the morning, he said, the integrity of the upright shall guide his life. The perverseness of the transgressor will destroy him. Do your best. Let me ask if the brothers have the amplified version that they can flash and I'll read it but if they cannot I'll read it from here. Verse 15 amplified version says study and be eager and do your utmost do your utmost to present yourself to God approved tested by trial a workman who has no cause to be ashamed nothing around you nothing in your life nothing about you will make you to bend your head in shame no story that anybody will find out and when they are telling it, you will bend down like this. And you will not be able to lift up your eyes and be able to declare the oracles of God. If there's anything like that, that will silence you in the midst of men who are supposed to hear you, that thing must go tonight. A man approved of God. So if you begin to pursue God's approval every day of your life, you will know that anything that will stand between you and the Savior, no way. No way. A workman, a servant of God, impeccable. I have read some of them in the Bible. And each time I listen to them, I feel like saying, oh God, that is the class I want to belong. Do you remember when it was time for Samuel to go? I don't know whether you remember. Samuel gathered the whole assembly of the children of Israel. He said, I want you to boldly come out and testify against me. Anybody's a goat or sheep that I have taken, 
either by koni koni method. Can you please talk? Is anybody whose wife or daughter I have mishandled in the name of counseling or in the name of prayer? Is there anybody like that? Please stand up and speak against me. Is there anyone who brought an offering and I did not totally declare it and presented it to God and I took a portion of it for myself? Please stand up and testify against me. And when he has listed and listed and listed, everybody kept quiet and they rose up. They said, no, you have not defrauded us. He said, Father, if what I've said is true and I'm your servant and I have, you are the one who backs me up, let what has never happened happen today. Suddenly, in the midst of dry season, thunder, and it rained heavily. And everybody bowed down and said, yes, this man is a man of God. Whenever you are transferred, from a local church to another church. Is there any transparent handover? Are you still able to stand up and say, brethren, I have lived in your midst for 10 years. Check me out. Check my record. I have related with this, with this, with this. Let all the young girls come out. Who have I touched? Whose breast have I ever played with? In the name of laying hands. Did I lay hands on you on any sensitive part of your life? Where do we have men? Who will call God to testify against them if they have not lived well? Hallelujah. The Bible said, Paul stood up in the midst of the Ephesians. He said, all of you know I have gone about preaching among you. I testify the word of God to you from house to house and publicly. And there's nothing that is useful that I know of the counsel of God that I've hidden from you. Now I want to go. Can you testify against me? Whose silver have I taken? Whose apparel have I coveted? Hey, pastor. Hey, a man just wore one dress as is flashy. And it's wonderful. And you came down in the name of greeting. He said, oh, my brother, God bless you. God bless you. Kai, this kind of suit. Eh? You are not yet a man of God. You are wearing this kind. <laughs> and your man of God is just, go and think about it. By the following morning, they packaged the cloth. The wife said, did the pastor say that? He said, yeah. Release it all so that your blessing will not be blocked. Ah! Paul said, is there anybody's apparel that I coveted? Did I see you wearing a beautiful dress? And I said, which tailor made this one for you? You know we are preachers. And we know how we talk. And can you, can you tell your tailor to come and see me? You have said it. What you have told that man carefully is that this kind, only the man of God should be wearing such. And whichever tailor is making it for you, let him come and take measurement. And then you handle it. (laughs) 
I'm begging God that you will pursue things that are eternal. How many clothes are you going to wear in life that clothes will silence your mouth? That when you stand out to preach, the children of your members say, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy! Pastor is wearing your dress. Oh, is that you? When you are a man that is seeking approval from God, nothing is important to you than to win God's eyes on your life. The question of ah, in the account is no balance. How can your account no balance? A man of God. How will money strangulate you when you are going far? How will money amputate you, man of God? What do you need money for when you have lost your name? Do you not know the Bible says a good name is better than what? Than silver and gold. And I'm telling you, as a servant of God, a good name is more important to you. A good name. And do you know that it takes many years to build a good name? But it doesn't take two months to, to, to put it in the dust. I charge you. Do your best. Do your utmost. And be eager. Be studious. Work hard. To present yourself to God approved, tested by trial, a workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing, oh my God, correctly analyzing, not modeling up the word of God, accurately dividing. And rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Correctly analyzing. You don't make the Bible to say what it is not saying. You don't look for one half of a Bible passage and to force it to say what you wanted to say. You don't take the word of God out of his context. Every scripture has been placed where it has been placed in the Bible to provide a context. When you take a text away from its context, you destroy the text. You bastardize the text. You disorient the text. You make the text to become a wandering star that has no location. And it pains me that I listen to preachers who take the word of God, who rest, they rest the scripture as if they are tearing it in order to support their own wicked appetite. Somebody walked up to me, a man of God, a preacher. The day he was going to divorce his wife. He walked up to me, to my office. He said, Bragbile, I know, I know that what I'm about to do, you will say it's not in the Bible. I said, what are you about to do, sir? This is when he has beaten his wife and blood was coming out of her mouth. He said, yes, the Bible said, for the hardness, for the hardness of their hearts, you can divorce your wife. 
And I was wondering, whose hardness of heart was the Bible talking about? Is it the hardness of the heart of the wife? Or the hardness of the heart of this man? I said, let us open the Bible. He said, no, 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 don't open any Bible to me. I know what I'm doing. I followed him. I begged him from 6 p.m. to 12 midnight. Brother, don't do this. This will finish your anointing. This will contaminate everything that God has used you to do. He said, no. People want to put us under as if we cannot do anything because I'm a preacher. I want to show that I can even do anything even though I'm a preacher. My brother, if the call of God is on your life, if you carry the holy anointing of the Holy Spirit, and if God has given you a commission to save souls, your life cannot be a free ranger anymore. You can't go to where you like to go. You will actually stretch forth your hand and another person will guard you and they will lead you to where you don't want to go. This is how you will glorify me, says the Lord unto Peter. My brother, my sister, are you a self-willed man? Who does anything he likes to do. And so in order to make it possible. You twist the word of God. The biggest problem I have. Is to see a man of God. Deliberately twisting the scripture. In order to protect his action. If you are just a sinner. That's all right. God have mercy on sinners. But when you become a professional, a professional in twisting the truth, in weakening the message, and in searing your conscience with hot iron, I don't know when God will be able to reach such a life again. Correctly analyzing Accurately dividing, rightly handling, and skillfully teaching the word of truth. So he began. He said, but you need to avoid all vain, empty, useless, idle talk. For it will only lead people into more ungodliness. And they are teaching, oh my brothers and sisters, they are teaching, we devour. It will eat its way like cancer and it will spread like gangrene. You know, I've never stopped wondering why error spread faster than the truth. I've never stopped wondering why people who twist the word of God are more popular. It bothers me that someone will sit down somewhere and twist the truth and it will go. And in less than three years, everybody is running with error. I said, Lord, why? Why is error like that? You know what God told me? Error does not need prayer to spread. Just like weeds don't need fertilizer to grow. Do you need fertilizer to grow weeds? No. They grow anywhere. Because the ground of the, of the heart of man is actually prepared for evil. So when you come with evil, they catch it. Do you know that if somebody stands and says, brethren, there's just a new revelation. As I was in my dream, the Lord appeared to me in an unmistakable revelation. Mm -hmm. And in that revelation, the Lord had told me that some new things is going to begin to happen. 
Some of the problem that we preachers have put on people, God has removed it. For example, God has said, a woman is free to do anything she likes. And uh, no man should oppress any woman anymore. Because we're in the age of grace. Shout hallelujah, all the women in the house. You see? Such women who don't understand, they will jump up and say, yeah! We are not finding a man of God. Please, I need, I, I need that message. I need that message. I need that message. We need to spread it everywhere. Error does not need prayer. Error does not need a special move to move. It spreads like gangrene. It devours like cancer. And we have found many of them in our day. We have found several of them everywhere. We have found them on the campuses. We have found them among women. And we have found them when they can no longer submit to leadership, they break away. They go and start something for themselves where nobody can talk to them. They look at soft spots. They specialize. And it will look as if they are moving. But now look at the Bible. Nevertheless. Would you like to come with me now to nevertheless? Nevertheless. Please tell somebody. Say nevertheless. It doesn't matter what people are doing, what they are saying, how they are doing it. The foundation of God standeth sure. Pastors, even if you don't agree with Brother Billy, that notwithstanding, God's word will not change. Even if you decide and say, all oh, this kind of thing, all oh, this kind of thing they are talking, they are not allowing our church to move forward. Move where? Where are you going? Where is your forward? If you are not going upward, you are not going forward. If all you are doing is about the earth, Jesus said, in the end time, iniquity shall do what? Shall abound. And the love of many shall was cold. Only those who endure to the end shall be saved. Paul said, the Spirit speaks expressly that in the end time, perilous time shall come. It shall become more difficult to be a Christian because men will love money more than God. They will love pleasure. They will love pleasure more than the love of God. They will devise things that men want to hear. These are the issues of the end time. Nevertheless, so join me now as we read. Flash that verse 19 back because I'd like everybody to help me to follow the word of God as we read it. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. The only way to maintain integrity and morality is never to forget this nevertheless. Mama, thank you for referring us to the sons of Rechabites. Abba. That even a man of God of the, of, the, of the quality of Jeremiah. Are you hearing me? A man of God like Jeremiah. He came and gathered these children. And he brought them not to one house. He took them to the sanctuary, to the house of God. And he sat them down. He said, you know, I'm a man of God. They said, yes, sir, with all respect. 
You know, I've been prophesied for many years and God has never failed. He said, yes, sir, we respect you. <laughs> and do you know that God speaks to me per second, per second? He said, we don't doubt. He said, thus says the Lord. So they were waiting. The Lord said, you sons of the Rechabites, that you should go and drink strong Ogoguru. <laughs> and he brought it inside the sanctuary. I imagine that he may have blessed it. And then the children stood up. They said, Sir, we don't we, we are not doubting that you're a man of God, but in this matter. Nevertheless, regardless of your anointing, regardless of your years of experience, regardless of many prophecies you spoke that came to pass, as far as this is concerned, our Father has taught us that anyone who wants to walk with God must tamper not with strong drink. We shall not. Go and tell your God that we, the sons of Rechabites, we will not change. And God said to Jeremiah, did you see now? Did you see now? That's the kind of man I am talking about. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth how? Sure. And it has a seal. The Lord knows them that are his. Don't be confused. Don't let anybody tell you it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It matters. It has a seal. The Lord knows them that are his. Let everyone everyone that name the name of Christ do what? Depart from what? Anyone who names the name of Christ let him depart what's the meaning of the word depart? eh? move out when iniquity is happening here you go there When iniquity is talking here, you move there. Any man that names the name of Christ, he must depart from iniquity. But later on, they even say you must flee from every what? Appearance. Anything that appears to be evil, let nobody see you around it. Anything that appears to be a compromise. The man that wants to win with God. The man that is planning. The woman that wants to make it to heaven and wear the crown of glory must depart. You can't be playing with sin and be hoping to make it up. You can't be dancing around iniquity and expect that heaven will back you up. I don't mind empty noise that people are making but I know it doesn't matter much. I have seen people that walked out of the word of God walk out of the truth as if they were going to become anything. Everything fizzled out and they are somewhere. They have not died but their lives have become history in their lifetime. My dear brother and sister, serving God under this great organization, the Four Square, is a privilege. A privilege to be under an anointing that has been going on for years. A privilege to watch a walk that grew, that grew, that grew. 
until grandfathers who served in it, died in it. And they were laid to rest in it. And they maintained the word of God. It's a privilege. I wonder why you are following recent converts. I wonder why you are excited running after someone who does not yet have five years of consistent Christian living. And he said, yes, that's my, that's my prophet. That's my prophet. Even the way you are speaking, I'm afraid of you. Nevertheless, the issue of integrity and morality is only because there is a nevertheless. The foundation of God standard sure. It has a seal. I pray that I will never stop preaching the truth until I go to heaven. But even if people like us decide to go backward, it does not affect the word of God. You only will make yourself a useless non-entity. God's work must continue. Don't think that if you backslide, the church of God will scatter. No! You will only scatter your life. You will only scatter your destiny. You will scatter your space. And you will no longer be found. Nevertheless, Whatever is happening in the world, hands joined to hands, no sinner will go unpunished. The foundation of God standeth sure. And it has a seal. And what is the seal? Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart. From iniquity. You cannot be playing with iniquity and you are carrying the holy oil. It doesn't go together. If we see you doing that, we know you are a bastard on the pulpit. We now know that you are drinking from somewhere else and God will flush such men out. And you know the blood that Jesus shed is still speaking. The nails that pierce his hand is still dripping. How can you be bold to crucify the Lord Jesus the second time? How can you sit upon God's heritage and you are handling it as if it's a personal business? How? My brother, how? My sister, how? What gives you that kind of audacity to twist the truth? Nevertheless, God's foundation stands sure, unshakable, unchanging. If it changes, I'll tell you, everything will have changed. There will have been no reference anymore. But it doesn't change. Say, I am the Lord. I change not. Abi? Hebrews 13 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. No change. No change. Men will come and go. He never change. Things will rise and go, rise up and rise up and rise and go down. Baba has never changed. And that's why I've also decided that, oh God, my friends may go. My colleagues may change. Our classmates may be singing a different song. Nevertheless, Mutima onaye yina rara konipada 
Jesu lona yena ohun lo lo sile ogo motima ona iye yina rara oh my god Jesu lona yena ohun lo lo sile ogo say i have seen the way I have known this way. And I'm not going to turn back. I have known that Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. That leads to glory. No matter how many decide to do something else, to preach something else. And one young man met me some years ago. He said, Bragbile, I have one question for you. I thought it's an important question. You know what he said? Why have you not changed? I asked him to change for what? And to what? He said he has been worried that I have not changed. I said, you will worry much more. Because I'm not going to change. But when we say we are not changing, are we stagnant? Brother, are we stagnant? No. And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord as in the word of God in the mirror, we are being changed into his likeness in an ever increasing splendor from one degree of glory to another. Shout hallelujah. To be consistent with the word of God is not to be stagnant. To follow the truth is not to be stagnant. To preach this message is not to be admoded. To insist on the truth does not make you in any way come behind. Actually, if you are constantly looking into the word of God, the perfect law of liberty, and you are not a forgetful hearer, but you are a doer of the work, I can see you progressing. I can see you advancing. I can see God taking you from one degree of splendor, one degree of glory to another degree of glory to another degree of glory. I can see you shining. He said the, the, the part of the righteous is like a, like a shiny star. Abi? That shines more and more, more and more, more and more clearer until the day star is formed in them. Don't let anybody bamboos you and say, hey, hey, you yeah, see, you are old fashioned. Where? Where? He is the one who has missed the road. Is the one who is like a changing cloud. They speak bogus, but there's no rain, no reality. May the Lord help us. Now, I now want you to follow me to verse 20 and 21, where we are going to be trusting God to conclude our meeting tonight. He said, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. I thought that they would have stopped that passage in that verse 20. I thought they would have said, yes, in a great house, some people are destined to be for honor. And others are destined, no matter how they try, to be relegated to dishonor. Some are for noble use, some are for ignoble use. I thought that that's where they are going to end. But I wanted to read the Bible very well. I wish you would help me check, because verse 21 from the old King James said, If anyone, Abi. If any man therefore purge himself from this, it shall be a vessel unto honor, 
So, but I want you to help me check it. Is there any version that you can help me read from verse 21 that does not note the word if and does not use the word anyone? Can you help me check? How did NIV put it? Those who cleanse themselves from the letter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Where is good news? Where will good news be here? Any good news? I can't come to this place and not find good news. Any good news, please? No good news in the house? You want to read it for me? Quickly, sir. Those who make themselves clean from all those evil things. Is that good news? Good news, sir. Uh uh. Your good news is sounding different, too. <laughs> Maybe it's a modern good news. Help me check correct good news. <laughs> there are many news nowadays. I thought the good news say if anyone makes himself or herself clean from all those evil things, they will be used for special purposes because they are dedicated and useful to their master, ready to be used for every good deed. Now what am I quickly arriving at here? That if anyone purges himself, if anyone cleanses himself from all those evil things, look at the word of God. It shall be a vessel unto honor. Let me ask you. Who can be a vessel unto honor? Who? Anyone. Does it include you? I'm asking a question. Can you be used by God for the highest purposes? Is there a space for a man like myself to be an honorable vessel in the hand of God? But the simple condition is what any one of us can meet. Say, but if anyone purge himself, purge himself, cleanses himself from all these things, he, look at the Bible, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified. And the word sanctified there means set apart. Specially kept. Preserved. And sanctified. And prepared to meet the master's taste. Meet. For the master's use. And prepared. Unto every good work. As I begin to draw this. To a conclusion. It means that. You can have integrity. Amen. It means. You can be victorious. As far as morality is concerned. It means. You can serve God from now to the end and nothing will tarnish your name. It means it is possible to start and end well. It means it is possible by the grace of God to end strong. It means by the grace of God you are not destined to be discarded and laid on the shelf 
and made a useless non-entity. It means it is possible that any and every one of us who chooses to be used of God, who want to sit along with the overcomers, who also want to wear the crown, the crown of righteousness, it is possible. And we are ending this meeting tonight by asking, is there anyone in the house? Is there anyone who is saying, Father, I have heard your voice. I have heard what you are pointing at. And I have decided to purge myself, to cleanse my life from everything that contaminates from everything that will not allow me to be the man, the woman that you brought me out to be. I don't want to relegate myself to some mania, ignoble, useless use. So whoever cleanses himself from what is ignoble and unclean, who separates himself from contact with contaminating and corrupting influences, will then himself be a vessel set apart and useful for honorable and noble purposes, consecrated and profitable to the master, fit and ready for any good work. Let me repeat that again. Because I'm going to make a space for you to pray with me tonight. I'm going to make a space for you to personally. Uh, you know, we have been serving God. We have been walking up and down. But I want to tell you that in this new season that God is bringing us into, God himself is deliberate now. And he said, if any one of you if any one of you will cleanse himself from what is ignoble for things that are unclean, things that are corrupting influences, if you will separate yourself from contact with contaminating things, sometimes these contaminating things may be a friend. Sometimes may be a preacher who has lost his bearing. I have gone here and there preaching. And sometimes I've seen what my eyes don't intend to see. And sometimes I have to sit up and say, Lord, what is going on? And I see the Lord as if God himself is bleeding and say, these are the people. They spoil my name. But I have taken a decision for my own life. Lord, having called me this way, you know it doesn't pay me to look back. Brothers, it doesn't pay me to look back. It will be a colossal loss if I look back. I have no other alternative than to go forward. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining, gaining every day. Still praying as I onward burn. Lord, plant my faith on high, higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on earth, heaven stable, higher plane, higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My brother, it does not pay me to look back. It does not pay me an inch 
to look back. Rather than look back, I will go to heaven. It's not compulsory for me to live long. It is necessary for me to live right. I don't have to be a Methuselah. Spoiling what I did before. I must not become history in my lifetime. If there's nothing more, I must go home. Whenever I've read the word of God and I see the way God speaks his word, I don't know why you will be comfortable looking back. He said, if a man has been righteous all his life and he turns to sin, to wickedness, what did the word of God say? All his righteousness will be what? Forgotten, cancelled as if he had never been one. And he will be made to stand in the class of the wicked. I don't like it. Did you hear me? I don't like it. How can I go now to the class of the wicked? And they say, bro, so you are finally back here. We thought that you are going to make it up there. We knew we are going nowhere. That's why we did not worry ourselves. We were settled to go to hell. But you are doing grandma, grandma, grandma as if you are going there. So you are finally here. Welcome. No. 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 I say no. Having laid my hands on the plow. No looking back. If you choose to go to heaven and you have spent five years on this way, there's no need to go back. If you said no to the devil before, how can you come and say yes to him? You try to keep yourself in holiness before you got married. You got married correctly. What has entered your head now that you are playing with young girls in the church? How will you rewrite your story? What will you be saying? What of the souls you preach to that have gone to heaven? And they now saw you on the other side, Baba, you are the one that shows this way. What happened to you and you are not here? You know the Bible. You taught us the Bible. You showed us the way. We ran on the way because you were telling us not to look back. Kilo Sheyisa. What made you to look back? How will you tell stories? It must not happen. So the Bible says, if anyone cleanses himself, this cleansing is not once. It's a continuous cleansing. You are checking every day because you want to progress. You are looking intently on to go and say, Father, until I finish, I have not finished. I must finish where? I want to stop at that. And the song, choir, thank you for standing up already. I'm pressing on. Now, but you don't sing it if you are not pressing on. This is important. You know, I've been a choir before. And I've been a composer of songs. 
Don't sing what you are not convinced about. If you are not pressing on, go and sit down. Your voice is wonderful, but it's not good when it does not convey your heart. As we go on singing that song, anyone who wants to press on with God, anyone who wants to say, every trap the devil has set on my feet, no more. I cannot become a shadow of what God wants me to be. How will I perish on the pulpit? How will my life become a mere shadow? And they say, this man, even this man, even this man, no. As my choir will help me sing, and we are singing with conviction. If this night you are saying, oh God, Whatever it will cost. Anything that will hinder me. I must let it go. Whatever it will cost. Wherever it will take me. Oh my God. I must end well. As we begin Lord, to pray that song, Lord, I will not need to call if you want to come before God and say, Baba, every day, every trap that Satan set to make me an empty story, separate me tonight. Oh my God. Higher ground. Thank you. Go ahead now. Oh, Lord, me, oh, Lord, let me, oh, let me stand. Robo Shanta Yaba Baba 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 My faith, honor, I agree. Lord leads me on. We are praying. I said, Lord is calling you today. Take a step out. Take a step out. And so, God, I have started. Doesn't pay me. I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on. Who is there pressing? Thank you. God bless you. This night, you can't take a step unless you are ready. As I'm all God bless you, sir. God bless you, my dear brother. Because we are scattered. If you are coming, just rush down before the Lord. Lord, lead me up. Lord, lead me up. Hallelujah. By faith on heaven. This is not a by empty world. Thank you, my friend. I am playing. I am playing. God bless you, my dear sister. Thank you, young lady. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want to scale. I want to scale. The earth most high. No Satan's down. No Satan's down. Pass me a horn. Pass me a horn. Pain has come. I ask a joyful song. Let joyful song. The song of sin. The song of sin. Is I a ground. On a higher ground. No one needs me. Oh, no what your heart. Fame is okay. Fabulousy. He big the God. Papa Tata. God you belong. God you belong. Oh, no, what you want. Oh, no, what you want. 
Lord, lead me on and let me stand. Are you there? Are you stretching your hand to heaven? I said, Lord, it doesn't pay me. I mean, started to look back. It doesn't pay me. I want. I want to leave above the world. Above the world. No Satan's no Satan. At me a home. At me a home. Faith is gone. Oh joy for some. God bless you. God bless you. The Holy Spirit is drawing you to the altar. God bless you, my dear sister. Thank you, dear brother. Just learn to walk them quickly. Thank you, my friend. God, you belong. Oh, my God. Oh, no, watch your walk. Are you coming down? It's okay. Before I call on God tonight, have you started to walk with God before? And a strange affection is coming on your heart. You say, well, I don't know what is happening. I know it is time for you to run to God right now. It is time to say, oh God, this trap will not catch me. I'm not going to become history in my lifetime. It doesn't pay me at all. If you need to run, run now because we are praying. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, that, that brother. That young man, run. God bless you, sir. Let heaven take record today that somebody is saying, Oh, God. Whatever it will cost, I must follow. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, that brother. Come down quickly. Go ahead now. Go ahead now, my brother. Yes, Lord. Lord, lift me up. Take me beyond him. Take me beyond him. Now, apart from those that have come before the Lord, lifting up their hearts and crying to God, have you found yourself standing out there? You are stagnant. Something came and dismantled your growth. Some quiet things began to struggle with your inner man. You are in a very dangerous condition. I hear you saying, but I have not gone back. But you are not going forward. When a man stops going forward, as far as God is concerned, he's already backsliding. Your prayer life has been perforated. The utterance that God gave you before is lost. 
Because something crept into your life. My dear brother, my dear sister, the hour of prayer is here. Restoration. A renewal. A bringing back of that which was lost. Where are you? We can't finish if God will not help your life. I don't know, but the Holy Spirit is urging you to rise and step out before God and say, Lord, even me also. Pressure is mounting on me. Fears and doubts are rising in my heart. I am under pressure to compromise. Needs want to squeeze me up. Lord, lead me up. Where are you? Where are you? What are you going to do tonight? Except to connect. We are going to pray the prayer that the choir began to pray. Living water must come to water the dead portions and life will come out again. We are going to ask God every dryness, every dry aspect of your soul, there must be a refreshing tonight. If you are feeling dry, you are feeling dry, something is finished. I call on you tonight, come down. Come down before the Lord. Go on your knees and say, oh God, this dryness must not overtake me. Are you now repeating yourself on the pulpit? Fresh word no longer comes. Your utterances become dry and dead. You must come down and say, Lord, touch me once more. Do some me dwell where this happened. My prayer, my is a I agree. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a glimpse of glory bright. The sun may dwell where this about I pray my is I am. Lord, lead me on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you are coming, please do quick now. God bless you, my dear sister. This dryness must go. This dryness. This empty noise must finish. Oh yes, oh yes, Lord. I want to scale. I want to scale the utmost height. And let me ask all our senior leaders, please come and join me to pray. All our national officers, Baba, please come. No robo shanda ya Baba. No robo sabara washi. Manda ya Baba Baba. No robo shi. night prayer is very critical are you a minister's wife and your inner man is dry you are no longer able 
to withstand issues. You are losing your temper every time. Many things are loosening in your hand. Where you used to prevail, you are already scattered. We are standing tonight to pray, to plead with God. The dryness, emptiness, stagnation, things that the Spirit of God ought to uproot tonight. If you are there and you are not yet on your knees, get on your knees. Get on your knees. I say get on your knees before the Lord this night. God bless you. If you cannot find space at this altar, just get on your knees. Don't say I'm an official. Don't say they will say. Nobody will say. We are crying to God for our help tonight. We are looking to God who can help us tonight. Thank you, my brother, my dear sister. Come down. Young man. I say you are too young to start patching up. Let's face God tonight and say, oh God, a new thing you must do. Thank you, my dear sister. Thank you, my dear brother. Thank you, oh man of God. God bless you. Maruba Shataba. Karomo Sambaraba. You will let me take this song again. Onu Wajo. Take me to Ayaka. If you are coming here, you must go on your knees. Lift up your two hands. No. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I clean Naked come To the for dread Helpless look To the for grace How I fall I to the fountain The fountain fly Wash me your savior or I die Wash me say if you're all I do, I bought a I am I am I am I am I am I am I I not the labors of my hands. Not the Oh, my God.
Let the heavens be open tonight. Let the water from above flow. Thou must say and thou alone. Nothing is my hands are Simply to thy cross I cling. Oh, Roma. They can come to the fortress. Oh, I call that to the fortress. Oh, for I to the fountain flask. Wash me, oh Savior, I die. Now we are doing very critical praying tonight. Our mother in the Lord is going to pray. All the women, all the ladies, you have faced the brunt of challenges. And you know God is saying, tonight, tonight, the Lord Jesus is here to clothe you again. To take away from you every garment of shame. God is standing here tonight to dip you, to dip into the fountain. That when you rise here, you rise in grace. You rise in power. You will rise from glory to glory. You will rise from victory to victory. The Lord will put a new word, a new song in your mouth. Things that are dry, things that are dead, they will come alive again in the name of Jesus. Things that are ready to die. You know that things are about to die. You know that you are struggling, but the things are about to finish. The Lord will stop it in the name of Jesus. We prophesy unto you tonight. Dry bones will live again. Dry bones will live again. Your fire will come back. I say your fire will come back. In the name of Jesus. The fresh word you used to know. The way the word of God comes to you and keeps you running. The revelation of that word will come back again. Before we conclude this praying, Mama, we pray first. And our Father, the Geo, we pray. And we are going to invoke the grace of God upon your life. This meeting must turn you around. And when the role is called up yonder, your space will not be vacant. Nobody will take your space. Nobody will take your glory. No one will say she used to be here. No. You will stand where you are supposed to stand. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Mama, please lead us to pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this mighty visitation. Mama, we bless your holy name. We thank you for this time of regeneration. We thank you for this time of transformation. We thank you for this time of cleansing. Father God, what you have done tonight will be permanent in the lives of your people in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, we pray. Whatsoever they have come here to request for or to depart from, they will never go back to their vomit again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Father God, 
There shall be no reversal. That which we have done tonight and the lives of your people shall be forever. It shall be permanent. It's evident. We be visible. Hallelujah. And their lives in the, in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. We pray in for grace. We pray for power of God because we don't have the might of our own. We don't have the power of our own to sustain this that you have done. Even during this program, my Lord and my God, release your grace. Let there be grace for sustainers in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, Amen. we thank you. Amen. Because whatsoever Amen. you do, it shall be forever. Forever. Lord the enemy has no right to take away from it any longer. I said to your people, by the mighty power of the Lord, it shall be forever. Amen. It shall Amen. be forever. Amen. It shall be forever. Amen. Until we see in your face in glory. It shall be forever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' name Amen. we pray. Amen. Now you are going to put your two hands on your head. As invocation of God's presence and power freshness of anointing a release onto where you are supposed to be standing a ministration that will transport you from where you used to be onto the next level whatever was the trouble by this night the Egyptian you see today you see them no more amen amen as Baba begins to speak it will fall on your head amen a destiny will be changed here tonight amen every locked up blessing shall open tonight amen satan will regret over your life in the amen. name of amen every confederacy in called against your life in the name of jesus to make you a disgrace in the name of jesus it is cancelled tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. You are rising from here. In the name of Jesus. From strength to strength. Amen. From glory to glory. Amen. From power to power. Amen. You will never remain the same. Amen. Your life is taking a new turn. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you because all power in heaven and on earth is with you. We declare concerning your people tonight that from today, let the glory of God be revealed in your life. Every reproach over your life is replaced with glory in the name of Jesus. Every shame and disgrace is terminated in the name of Jesus. Every filthy garment that has kept you on the same spot spiritually, that has sacrificed you spiritually, they catch fire now in the name of Jesus. The Lord will clothe you with his glory in the name of Jesus. He will clothe you with his power in the name of Jesus. I declare concerning you, from tonight, you will grow from glory to glory. You will go from strength unto strength. You will go from power to power in the name of Jesus. From tonight, concerning you shall be forward ever in the name of Jesus. Backward never in the name of Jesus. 
I pray for you that from tonight your life will become a shiny star. In the name of Jesus, all that was ordained concerning you from the foundation of the wall, from tonight it is released in the name of Jesus. Every caged glory of your life, every stagnated glory of your life, they are released tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. The purpose of God for your life. I release it and I let it loose in the name of Jesus. You will fulfill purpose. You will fulfill purpose. You will fulfill purpose. You will not disappoint heaven. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you've had us. I pray for you that on the last day you will hear well done thou faithful servant. In the name of Jesus, your name will be written in the Lamb Book of Life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing. I declare concerning you that from today, for your sake, many will come into the kingdom. From being a reproach to the kingdom, your life will become a shiny glory. In the name of Jesus. From today, the reproach of Egypt is rolled away from your life. In the name of Jesus. Bible says, our God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. I declare that from today, let the Spirit of God manifest in your life like never before. In the name of Jesus, you are clothed with power. Receive fresh anointing. Receive fresh unction. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Rise up, Rise up on your feet. Congratulations. Please learn to say no. What did I say? Learn to say no. Huh? Learn to say what? <laughs> Whatever granted you before, the Lord will give you grace to say no to it. Learn to say what? And that's what the Spirit of God told me. Learn to say no. And it can be well with you. God bless you. Let's rise up as we pray for God's servants. How many of us have been blessed? These three sessions have been wonderful. Let's just wave our hands and say, Father, thank you for the gift of your servant to your church. Thank you for the way you are using him to your glory. Thank you for what you are using him for. Thank you for the manifestation of your power and your glory through him. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. We give you praise. We worship and adore your name. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. The Bible said that Jesus, having led captivity captive, he ascended on high and he gave gifts unto men. This is one of the gifts you have given to your church, for which we are grateful. Accept our thanks and our praises in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your grace upon his life. Thank you for your grace upon his ministry. Thank you for your grace upon his family. Accept our thanks and our praises in the name of Jesus. We pray for him, Lord, that in every area, he will go from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, he will go from strength unto strength. In the name of Jesus, that each time he opens his mouth to preach the war. It will always come fresh in the name of Jesus. That you will open unto him, Lord, the revelation of your war. 
every time at a new level in the mighty name of Jesus. The word will never be stale in his mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for him. Lord, the vision that you have given to him, Father, with your support, he will fulfill it in the name of Jesus. We pray for his family, Lord, as he helps to water others, helps to repair other families. We pray that his family will go from glory to glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for hearing. Thank you for making him a voice in this land. Take all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. As he will be going back tomorrow, Father, you brought him here safely. You will take him back safely in the name of Jesus. Thank you for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed.